In this tutorial, I'm walking through how to do a multi-game object animation. This is critical when creating a character or a player from, well, different game objects, different sprites. It allows the flexibility for character customization, for character randomization, and for more versatility in the movement, in the damage, in sprite shifting, all of these things. Now, if you don't currently have a multi-component character, all of the sprites I'm using right here, all of these graphics, um, uh, the background I edited from Kenley, but other than that, this is all mine. The assets are linked in the description. They're free to use on this, on something else. Use them, abuse them, mock them, whatever you need. Creative Commons Zero, do whatever you want with them. All right, that being said, I have this set up and I want an animation for my entire player. However, don't do what I did when I started with Unity and I attached an animator to every detail. That is a nightmare and thankfully Unity doesn't make us do it. So what we will be doing though, I do want to create an animation. So let's have our folder structure set up because it will make our lives easier. I'm going to go ahead and right click. If you want to know how to create this character, multi-components, you should definitely check out my other tutorials. I have them on that. But this is focusing on getting your game objects, your multi-component uh, game object, game objects, character to move. Animations. Great and great. And I'll just create something here. Animations, double click, and I'm going to just say player. All right. And I'll add my animator to this actually first. So create, you can also do this by doing it directly within the component or the game object, but uh, animate controller. And I'm gonna say player uh, controller. Eh, I'll say player animator. And I do that just for clarity. You don't actually have to have that in the name of yours. So I'm gonna drop it right here. You could always click add component as well, of course. Okay, now that we have an animator, let's go ahead and head towards our, we need um, animation, animator. Now, this is just gonna show you what we have thus far, right? So we have our base layer, animation, nothing's here, and it will let us set the defaults. So for now, that is great. That's what we would expect. Let me head over to window now and, the, and head into animation, animation. And I'm gonna stick mine uh, I kind of want it over here. Perfect. All right. And there we are. And to go ahead and create an animation, I can have my player selected as so, which is what the component, the animator is attached to. And I'm going to click create and I can name my animation. So I'm already in animations. I'm already in player. I could have uh, named this better, I guess, but uh, we'll call this first one animations player i'm going to make a folder just to fo further organize it called walk walking and maybe i'll put my different walking animations within here and i'll call this forward walk all right there we are now with that ready to go i can start adding the actual instructions that need to be followed to create this animation so i can hit add property and if you have a sprite sheet that you could just drag and drop your different images here and run through them that way to do this manually, it provides a bit more flexibility right now. I have the entire player selected. If I hit transform, right, I can pick position, so on and so forth. So, however, I want the, this first animation, I want my whole head area to move. Boop. That's the head area. So I'm just going to have it bob up and down a bit while the while the character's walking. So here I have head area. Now I'm going to do transform. And like I said, I'm just going to have it bob up and down. This is the benefit of organizing into several different, uh, using empties to organize the components of your player. It's going to give you easy control over that player during animation sequences. So I'm going to use position right here. And yeah, we'll say start there, end there. And all I'm going to have it do is at the midway point here, I'm going to have it dip a little. So let me hit record. And again, I am doing the head object. I can do this manually by using this tool. Zoop. Or I can get more exact movement. I don't know, maybe a 1.5. Maybe that's too much. Maybe a 0.1. And I'll stop there. So now the head's ready to go. And I can hit play and preview this, of course. And I got myself a bobblehead. 
So far, so good. Now, this is just one item. I can easily now keep going. So maybe I need the body. And I'm going to go ahead, leave the player selected, of course, because that's where the animator is. Add property. Uh, body. Ah, yeah, make sure. So I didn't have that actually under this. So now I can do so. Add property. Thought it was going nuts. Body. And then I'm going to use the transform again. And I will once again use the position. And here it's popping up. I'm going to select here again. I'm going to select record. And I'm going to actually move the body down the exact same amount, which was negative 0.1 I liked. And let's take a look. Let me stop that. <laughs> it looks a bit strange. Maybe I want the head to move at a slightly different speed or maybe slightly less. So to do that, I can select back here. Just for clarity, I'm going to select record again. And then maybe I want this to be negative 0 0.08 just so it moves a bit less. Let's uh, take a look at that. Okay, sure. And at this part, point I can start separating out things like the arms keep in mind though the arms are already going up and down with the body but the great thing about the flexibility provided here is I can still select them like so okay and now I'm going to say the arms are going to go maybe left to right or if I wanted individual control which seems reasonable I can break them down to that as well so maybe I want to make this a left arm and then I'm going to go ahead and create an empty right arm. Let me reset that. Oh, we're good to go there. Okay, and now I can move these independently. So add property. Here is the uh, body. And now here are my arms. So add property left arm, right? Transform position. And depending on what I want to do with this, for instance, I just want to make them go back and forth. So maybe all I really want to do for that is change its rotation, left arm rotation, record, and I can go ahead and manipulate it as much or as little as I would like. I'm going to say maybe a one here, or I can't even see two, I want some level of movement that would be visible. So maybe that will be a three. And then I'll have the other side be a three as well. Or if I want for realistic arm movements for the left arm, I'm going to delete this. I'll go halfway through, which would be the 15 second mark. And I could have the arm go in at this point. And then I can go all the way over here at the 45 second mark right here, or 45 milliseconds, I should be saying, and have the arm go out. So I did 0.3, maybe I do negative 0.3 here. And then I would want to make sure at this point right here to reset everything to zero. So it goes in and out. Let's take a look. And you can see the arm moving independently like so. I can do that with the other arm, and I can keep going to have the legs be moving on their own as well, even separating them out in the same fashion, maybe even controlling size so they'll minimize and maximize as the player moves along. Now, I want to get to, though, this is the default animation. You can have other animations doing this, of course. So to do that, you would go up here and I can just create a new animation and maybe want I, I want an idle animation. So player, ID, LE, and save. And at this point, I can do the exact same process here of animating components of the body of the player independently of one another, controlling as much or as little as the player as I want. It's a really powerful way to animate your character and do so so it could be used across different games or different scenes, of course, and give you some customization options for your player. Again, if you need components, if you need a multi-component uh, sprite-based player, you want to use different game objects like this, all of these assets are free in the description. If you want to see how to build this out more fully or how I got started on this, definitely check out my other videos.